In my last video, we saw that my biological age was 35.4 years, which is 13.7 years younger than my chronological. Similarly, when using aging.ai, my biological age was 28 years, which is 21 years younger than my chronological. So what's contributing to these data? So in this video, I'm going to go over what supplements and what my cardiovascular CV metrics, heart rate variability, HRV, and a resting heart rate, what those values are and how they may contribute to these biological age data. So first, in terms of supp supplements, there are three main supplements that I've taken for a long time. Uh, these are levothyroxine. So I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism in my 20s. So I've taken levothyroxine uh, for more than 20 years, 137 and a half micrograms per day. And then in the winter, I supplement, supplement with vitamin D, 1,000 IUs per day. And then I've been experimenting with uh, methyl B12 off and on uh, once every three days to try to keep homocysteine at a reasonable level. So uh, a relatively new addition to my supplements are, is melatonin. And for those who are familiar with the channel, I included that a couple weeks before the, uh, in the middle of January. So uh, that correspond to blood test number one, but I included it more often during this period that corresponded to blood test number two. And my average melatonin intake was 194 micrograms per day for the 49 day period that corresponded to test number two. And if you're interested in why I included melatonin into my approach, I leave, I'll leave a video in the upper right corner. All right, so what about cardiovascular? Again, CV metrics. So here we're looking at heart rate variability, HRV, for test number one versus test number two in 2022. So for test number one, so the black circles, each circle corresponds to one day's worth of data, and my fitness tracker provides these data automatically. Uh, and if you're interested in which fitness tracker that I wear, I'm not sponsored, so I'm not going to give them a shout out. So just leave a comment, and I'll be glad to indicate which one that I use. So for test number one, that was the period from December 13th, 2021, through January uh, 23rd of 2022. So that's a 42 day period. And during that period, my average heart rate variability was about 51 milliseconds. So what about for test number two? So that period included from January 24th, so the day of the blood test, through uh, March 13th of 2022. So that was a 49 day period. So my average heart rate variability during that 49 day period was 55.7 milliseconds. So we can compare whether these two groups of data are significantly different or not by using a two sample t-test and when I do that, or when I did that, these two groups of data are indeed significantly different. As we can see, the p-value is less than 0.05, the sh threshold for statistical significance. So from that, we can see that there was a significantly higher heart rate variability for test number two when compared with test number one. All right, what about resting heart rate, RHR? So that's what we can see here. And again, comparing test number one data, so that 42-day period, versus test number two period, so that 49-day period has shown here. So first, for test number one, my average resting heart rate was about 47 beats per minute. But then for test number two, it was very close to 45 beats per minute. And when using a two-sample t-test, we can see that these two groups of data are also significantly different. So a lower resting heart rate for test number two when compared with test number one. So cumulatively, we can see that I was able to significantly reduce my resting heart rate and increase heart rate variability for test number two when compared with test number one in 2022. So as a quick aside, note that for test number one in 2022, I was 16.4 years younger. So my biological age actually got a little bit worse for test number two using Levine's phenotypic age calculator. And then also for aging.ai, I was 23 years younger for test number one in 2022, whereas I was about two years older or a little bit worse uh, for test number two. So slightly worse biological age data for test two versus test one, but better cardiovascular metrics. So that raises the question, should improved cardiovascular metrics be indicative of a younger age? So why would I think that may or could be true? So to address that, let's take a look at aging related data for resting heart rate and heart rate uh, variability. So first, how does resting heart rate change during aging? And that's what's shown here. And this is a study of about 92,000 people. And the link for this study and the next will be in the video's description. So first, we can see that the average resting heart rate increases during aging for both men in blue and women in green. Uh, from about 20 years old to 50 years old. And then after uh, age 50, we can see that resting heart rate then declines during aging all the way up through 85 years old for both men and women. Now, note that a relatively low resting heart rate of 62 can be found in youth in 20-year-olds, but it can also be found in 7-year-olds. So that raises the question, is the resting heart rate reduction from test number one to test number two indicative of cardiovascular aging or youth? So age-related data for heart rate variability can, can provide more context. 
So how to, for that context, how does heart rate variability change during aging? And that's what's shown here. And on the y-axis, we're looking at the RMSSD. That's the measure of heart rate variability that's provided by my fitness tracker. And what we can see is when looking at the median values uh, for men in blue, which I just highlighted with the solid black line. And uh, as a quick note, uh, this is data for heart rate variability that's obtained at six in the morning. And my, again, my fitness tracker provides these data automatically uh, during the last sleep cycle, which is very close to six in the morning. Um, but also note there is data for heart rate variability, the dashed lines, which is people who had their heart rate variability measured at six o'clock at night. So it's a little bit lower at night when compared with the morning data. But nonetheless, we can see that heart rate variability declines during aging from values approaching 80 in 20 year olds to values approaching 40 in 60 year olds. So note that at older ages, we can see that there's a relatively low resting heart rate, but also a relatively low heart rate variability. And in contrast, in youth, youth is characterized by low resting heart rate, but then a high heart rate variability. So to put my data into this context, my average heart rate variability for this most recent test, test number two, could also be the median value for someone about 19 years younger. So that would argue that heart rate variability could be a good measure of a younger age. But also note that a heart rate variability of 56 milliseconds is also found within the shaded region, which is the heart rate variability range for all age groups, uh, whether they're young or older. So at worst, I think it's fair to say that uh, 56 milliseconds is at the high end of the range, heart rate variability range, for my chronological age. So I seem to be doing better than the median uh, value for someone at my chronological age for heart rate variability. All right, so what's con contributing to the test-to-test -test improvements for these cardiovascular metrics? So first, let's have a look at body weight and how it may impact heart rate variability and resting heart rate. And we're looking at body weight data for that corresponds to test number one versus test number two again in 2022. And I weigh myself every morning and then I record that data into a spreadsheet. So first for uh, test number one, my average body weight was 154 pounds, exactly 154. And then for test number two, for that 49 day period, my average daily heart, uh, um, sorry, body weight was 153.4 pounds. And when using a two sample t-test, these two groups of data are significantly different. So from that, we can conclude that there was a lower average daily body weight, even though it was a small difference, it's still lower, significantly lower for test number two when compared with test number one in 2022. So why is this important? What's, how, how may body weight impact heart rate variability and resting heart rate? So here we're looking at heart rate variability versus body weight, BW, starting from August of 2018, which is when I first started using the fitness tracker, through March of so th this month, March of 2022. And the little n is how many days of data that I have. So that's more than 1,300 days of data during that span. And each data point corresponds to one day's worth of data. So for heart rate, heart rate variability's uh, correlation with body weight, we can see that it's a, an inverse correlation. In other words, as body weight increases, heart rate variability decreases. And we can see that that's a significant correlation because the p-value is less than 0.05. Now, conversely, as my body weight has approached 150 pounds, heart rate variability approaches 60 milliseconds, which if you remember from the last slide, is approaching youthful values. So what about resting heart rate? So that's what's shown here over the same time period of more than 1,300 days. And in this case, we can see a positive or an increasing correlation. So as body weight increases, resting heart rate also increases. And again, that too, that p-value is uh, lower than 0.05. So this is a statistically significant uh, correlation. So also note that at the end of, other end of that uh, uh, chart, as body weight approaches 150 pounds, my resting heart rate approaches 45 beats per minute. So collectively, that indicates that resting heart rate and heart rate variability approach, approach youthful values as my body weight decreases. So uh, that's one aspect uh, or one variable that may impact these cardiovascular metrics. Another obviously would be physical activity. So how may that impact heart rate variability and resting heart rate? So to assess that, I'm gonna look at the average daily heart rate as an index of daily activity. So my fitness tracker provides not just the resting heart rate, but my average heart rate for the whole day. So how does that relate to heart rate variability and resting heart rate? So here we're looking at the ADHR for the first test versus the second test in 2022. And for the first test, my average daily uh, heart rate, as an, again, is an index of physical activity, daily physical activity, was 57 beats per minute. And for test number two, it was 56.2 beats per minute. Now, in this case, these two groups of, groups of data are not significantly different. Even though the p-value is somewhat close to 0.05, it's higher. So we can't conclude that these two groups of data are different. We can't conclude that the 56 is significantly lower than 57 for test two versus test one. So this suggests that uh, daily physical activity amounts 
uh, didn't contribute to improvements for heart rate variability and resting heart rate for test number two, that it may just be that small reduction in body weight that may have driven the uh, relatively small improvements for the cardiovascular metrics for test two versus test one. So how does physical activity impact or average daily physical activity impact, potentially impact these cardiovascular metrics? So that's what we can see here. Uh, first, we're looking at heart rate variability versus the average daily heart rate. And note that the, the date range starts from April of 2020 through uh, March of this year. And that's because I didn't have the idea to start recording these data in my spreadsheet until uh, April of last year. I wish I started tracking this stuff you know, when I started tracking everything in 2018, but unfortunately, I just didn't have that idea. So here we can see that the higher the level of my average daily, average daily heart rate or the average uh, physical activity, the higher my physical activity each day, that's significantly correlated with a lower heart rate variability as shown there. So to, that suggests that too much daily activity is gonna be bad for heart rate var variability. All right, what about resting heart rate? So now we can see a, an increasing correlation or a positive correlation. In other words, as daily activity increases, resting heart rate increases. So that suggests that too much daily activity is bad for resting heart rate. So to sum these two, uh, two groups of data up, too much daily activity and too often may result in suboptimal heart rate variability and resting heart rate values, which then raises the next question, what's the optimal amount of daily physical activity that can optimize both of these cardiovascular metrics? So for me, it seems like keeping my data for uh, somewhere in the 55 to 60 range, whether it's um, uh, average, the average daily heart rate 55 to 60 uh, beats per minute, that may be the best path for optimizing both resting heart rate and heart rate variability. However, it's easier said than done. Sometimes responsibilities of life get in the way and the average daily heart rate, there'll be more activity on that day than, than there should be. Uh, so in that case, I would have to try to better manage my uh, average daily heart rate the next day to try to uh, maximize recovery. So that's an important point because finding the balance between active days and also rest days is important because as these data show, if I'm too active too often, that's going to result in suboptimal cardiovascular fitness metrics. All right, what I haven't yet covered though is diet composition. How does that contribute or what, how does that correspond to blood test number two data? And that'll be coming soon, so stay tuned for that in the next video. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.